Take a look at this image gallery. When I hover over any of them, it's going to expand and it's going to stay in proportion to those images because this image is a horizontal, whereas this image is a portrait. So even though I've got varied sized images over here, it will grow them in proportion to how big the image is. And all I'm doing is hovering over them. If you've got links in here, if I click on this particular image, it'll take me to another website. All of that can be done and I'm going to show you how. Honestly, it's not that difficult. We've got a container and I've dropped in images and we got HTML. This is what powers all the magic that I just showed you. This container, well, it's up to you what you want to do with um, the alignment, the sizing of it, if you're going to add in any padding. The most important bit, though, about this container is how the class name of this is called image-row. Image-row, okay? Make sure you stick that in. And then I've got my images. Now, you just drop them in as you want. If you want to have them linked to a media file, if you want to have them linked to a custom URL, if you don't want to have any links, it's up to you. The important bit about the image, and like I said, just drop in your image, you do not set the width or the height, okay? You don't set any of that. You don't even have to do the border radius. The only thing you need to do is go and give it a class name of grow image. One word, grow image. I wasn't very consistent, was I, with like hyphens and no hyphens, but this is because I was experimenting with this at the time. But the CSS class name is grow image, one word. And all you're going to do is just replicate that. Just duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And the point I want to make, and I probably haven't done this very well, is if we go to this particular image over here, this is a portrait image, 742 by 1301 WebP image. Whereas if I go to this image, this is a 1920 by 1280. So I'm just showing you how you could have images of different proportion. Some could be rectangles, some could be portrait or landscape. Some could be landscape. Some could be portrait, some could be square. And when you tend to use galleries and stuff like that, it, when you have varied proportions, the width and heights can sometimes look a bit off. Now, I am going to be using cover in here, but it will enable you to maintain some proportionality. So you go and drop in your images, okay, and you can have as many as you want. Don't go too overboard, but you can add as many as you want. Now, I'm going to go back over to the container because this is where I've gone and dropped in some CSS. So the HTML which is the script, is going to allow it to grow and shrink when you hover over it. Okay, I had to use the script. I was trying to do it with just CSS and it kind of not glitched, but it was a little bit jerky with how it went good, good, good like that. And I really didn't like it. But inside of the container and the code for this will be in the video description. This is now where we control the sizing. So this is where I've gone and done stuff like my border radius, my transition speed. But the important bits are over here. So when we start, this image or all of the images are going to be a width of 100 pixels by 300 pixels high, which is why we've got this kind of slimmed, narrow look at the moment. And then when you hover over it, it will go to width and height 100%. And within the JavaScript code, that's where it kind of helps to maintain the proportionality. Because what you don't want is for like, just because one image was like rectangle, for all of the images to take that on, which is why you have to be careful with when you then say, when I hover over it, I now want it to become 500 pixels wide. Because if you've got a portrait one, it might not work so well. The important bit over here is object fit cover and center center. And I know you could argue, yeah, but now if it's covering that particular estate when it goes to 100 and 100%, it's not showing the full image, but believe me, you're going to be seeing the best part of the image when you're doing cover center center usually. And then down here, I've gone and said what I want to do for the mobile. So if you are viewing this on a mobile, the effect does not kick in. You got to appreciate that having these hover effects on the desktop is absolutely fine, even on the tablet to an extent. But on the mobile, I would say don't do it. Just show your images. So all I'm now saying is just show my images as they are. 160 by 140, okay? So it's not a perfect square, but I'm okay with that. It just looks like that. And I always feel like trying to be clever with certain effects works great on desktop. But on mobile, you need to ease it, rein it in a little bit, okay? Because <laughs> you can put people off when they're trying to move their finger and things start growing and jumping around and then things start wrapping, it, it's not good. So watch out for that. So the code, which is just inside of a HTML widget, you don't need to do anything with it. Just drop it in, leave it as it is. 
The only thing you might want to change is at what point does the mobile kick in? So I've basically said anything less than or equal to 768, do not apply any of this logic. That anything that is 769 and above, please apply the logic. So let's have a look at it. Hover over any of these images and you get the horizontal effect. Doesn't matter where you go, it's going to do it for you, okay? What if we go to this image, which is more of a four by three? It shows it in proportion. What about this image? This is a portrait image-ish. It's not a complete portrait. It's not like a 1080 by 1920. It's a, it's a more of a taller image and you can see it. So you get to now mix up and show different proportionate, proportional images and have a nice little hover effect on your desktop to mix things up a little bit. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. Go check out our website for how to build websites more efficiently, how to increase your business productivity. Of course, make sure you browse the videos on our channel, how to learn CSS. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon.